we need to extract customer names that did not buy a product from this specified list. If we look at Sue, there's the three products. And none of those products are in this list. So we need to extract that customer name in the final list. Shahara, well, there's a quad. It is in this list. So we do not want to extract that customer name in the final list. Now, this video is going to be amazing because we'll see how to do it with worksheet formulas and an amazing Power Query solution. Now, the essence of this problem is that we are comparing two lists. We need to extract the products for Sue, get it as a list, and compare it to this list. And then we have to do it for each customer. So step one, we got to get a unique list of customers. So here we go with unique, close parentheses, tab. Now for each customer, the first step is we have to extract that list of products that they bought. The perfect function for that is filter. In array, we put the product column. We're trying to go get those products, F4. Comma. In include, I need to give it a series of trues and falses. F4, when that column is equal to whatever the customer is to the left. Close, Control Enter, and those are the products for Sue. Now we can compare the two lists. And the perfect function to compare lists is the X match function. Now for lookup value, we're going to tell X match to look up both of the didn't buy products. F4, comma, within lookup array. Those are the products for the particular customer. And X match will report the position it found the item. If it doesn't find these products in the customer list of products, it returns an NA. Close parentheses. Now, because we gave X match two lookup values, these two products, Control Enter, it delivers two answers. For Sue, it didn't find Quad or Carlota in Sue's sublist of products. If I copy it down to Shahara, well, sure enough, when we looked up Quad in her list, it was the first item, Control-Z. So when we get all NAs, that means the customer didn't buy products from this list. F2, we want a true when there is an NA. Close, Control, Enter. And we're interested in when they're both true, that means an AND logical test. So AND, both are true, then this aggregate function delivers a single answer, true. And we can double click and send it down. And there's our patterns of trues and falses that we can now use inside filter. We're trying to get from a unique list of customer names, comma, just the ones who did not buy those products. And bam, there's our list. Now, formula bonus number one. As we learned about two videos ago in MEX video number 10, we can use let. We defined all the elements, got a unique list as the variable CU, and then customers did not buy. That's a variable where we use map and lambda and that same aggregate formula so we can spill it. And then we filter. Now here's formula bonus number two. We don't have to use and and is and a. We can simply count. Count only counts numbers. So when there's two NAs, it delivers a zero. So Shahara bought one of the products. Mo bought both. To buy both and create this array of trues and falses, we just set it equal to however many products there are in that list. Buy neither, that's what we did with and and is and a. We set equal to zero. And buy one or more, we set it equal to greater than zero. All right, so that's how to do it with formulas. Let's go over to this sheet and see how to do it with Power Query. We have the same two tables. Up in data, I used from table range to import them into the Power Query editor. I call this table CP for customer product, and this one DB for didn't buy. Now, the very first thing we need to do to this query is extract it as a list. So I'm going to right click, 
drill down. Now we can see the icon has changed. This is a list. Now we can use it over in the CP table. I'm going to click CP. Well, over in Excel, we used filter to group the records together. Well, watch this. I'm going to group customer. Right click, group by. We're going to group by the customer, so it'll give us a unique list of customer. I'm going to call this something like didn't buy. The operation for the time being, all I want to do is group together all the rows into a table for that particular customer. We have nothing here. I click OK. Now let's look. There's the table for Sue. We're interested in the product column. Now I'm not going to add extra steps. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to come up to the formula bar, table.group. We're acting on the previous step. We group by customer. List within a list allows us to put as many grouping calculations that we want. And after each, I'm going to delete everything. But that underscore says, please get what's ever in this row. So if I leave it there, it will get the table. That's not quite what we want. I'm going to delete everything. The way we extract a column as a list from a table is we use the lookup operator. That's a square bracket. And as we see down here, the column we want is product. And for the time being, all I'm going to do is I'm going to close off the list within a list and then close off table.group. And when I hit Enter, now for each row, I have a list with the products that that customer bought. Now all we need to do in each row is compare this list to the DB list. Now we compared the two lists using X match. Over here, after each, I'm going to type a space. The function we use is list.contains any, and everything has to be case sensitive. And the first list, just like we put into X match, is going to be DB for didn't buy, comma. And then the second list, just as we put the product list in the second argument of X match, will be that product. Close parentheses. Now, this is going to deliver a true or false, but it's going to say when it finds one or more products. At the end, Enter. We want the opposite of each one of these. So in Power Query, space after each, and the not operator is lowercase not. That'll just reverse trues and falses. And that's our formula. We have our patterns of trues and falses. Now we can simply filter for trues, right click Remove, and bam, there it is. Now we can close and load two. I have already loaded it, so watch this. I'm going to just load it as a connection. Actually, F2, we're not going to, we're going to change the query name. Something like customers not buy, enter. Right click, load to table right here. Click OK. And Power Query can do this too. Now, I want to double click and open this and consider something. Anytime we do, so right here, group rows, we're iterating over a bunch of lists. And we don't really need to do that if there's a lot of duplicates. So watch this. I'm going to insert a step. And for a small data set like this, it doesn't matter at all. But this may help performance if you have lots of duplicates. But you can see duplicates, Chantel Aspen, Chantel Aspen. Well, we can get rid of those duplicates, and all the rest of the steps will work just fine. Selecting the entire table, right click, remove duplicates. Do I want to insert? I do. I want to insert a step right there. Insert. There's the simple formula, and all the remaining steps are the same. Close and load. So we can definitely do it in Power Query, and we can also do it with worksheet formulas. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up. Leave a comment and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.